When I want to expose several systems through a single interface, I use the facade pattern. Here's an example. I'm using three tools in this project that control visual effects. When my player moves from place to place or some kind of cinematic occurs, I want to change the effects. What I don't want to do is call several methods and change properties every time on all of these systems. You might be doing this with weather systems or audio systems or anywhere else where you have operations that affect an entire subsystem of objects. And this is where the facade comes in. Today we're going to create a facade for three post-processing effects to create complex visual styles with just one method call. While you could use any combination of subsystems behind a facade, today I'm going to show you how I would combine regular post-processing effects with the unique features of Beautify 3 and oil paint assets to create some unique visuals for this game. So as part of this system, I've created a few different volume profiles that we can use for the different styles of effects I want to have. So we've got really basic ones here. I've got an artistic one that doesn't do too much because I'm going to count on some FX for this one. But the horror one is going to slightly change the color a little bit to a bluish color. It has some other features like chromatic aberration and depth of field. And I've created a movie volume that just has some things like vignette, motion blur, depth of field. And then I've also created another volume that has all my Beautify settings. Now you can see Beautify, of course, has so many settings you can choose. And I've only set some of them a little bit more bloom, some anamorphic flares. And a little bit further down is a new feature of Beautify 3, which is the ability to have cinematic bands on your screen. So what I'm going to do is have horizontal bands on the top and bottom of my shot when I'm playing a cinematic sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object here that'll just hold a bunch of buttons that'll interact with our facade. I've already created an empty script that'll hold our buttons, but let's also create one for the facade as well. It's going to be a singleton and I'll move it into its own file here. Our facade is going to be an interface between the different post-processing setups I want to have and the rest of the game. So we'll have some public methods here that will hide the complexity of how these systems will behave. So these three methods here will form our public API. Any button or trigger or other event that needs to change the post-processing effects just needs to call one of these public methods. Back in the buttons class, let's define three buttons, one for each of those public API methods. Uh, I'm going to use Odin here, so I'll just define a color quickly, and then I'll just use the Odin's button attribute to create a button for each one. Once I've got the first one written here, I think Copilot should be able to take over from here. So yeah, it already knows what I want to do. So there we go. We'll set up horror, set up cinematic, and set up artistic. Let's jump back into Unity and make sure these look correct. I'll just drag the buttons component onto my game object here. And yeah, there we go. That all looks great. Okay, let's carry on and we'll start with the first part of this. Now for each one of these public methods, I want to load one of the volumes that I created earlier. So we'll store that into its own variable here. In start, we'll run a method that will initialize this. All we really need to do to initialize a volume is to create a new game object, add the volume component to it, and then we need to load the settings into the volume. To actually load the settings into the volume, what I'm going to do is create a new class here called resources utils, and it's just going to have an extension method. We'll call it load volume profile. It'll use the resources.load method and assign the profile that it loads into the volume. So now we can come back to the facade and the first part of each one of these methods will be to load one of these presets that we've already created. So I'm just going to put the methods in here for each one of those. Perfect. Now we can test it out. So back over here, I'm just going to add the facade to the same game object. You don't have to, but I think it's simple for this demo. And press play. And now let's check out horror. So we've got the colorization there. Cinematic, nice and crisp with a little more bloom. And the artistic, not much different than the cinematic yet, but we'll be changing that in a moment. So it's doing exactly what we want. It's loading all the profiles. Let's come out of play mode and keep going. So the two other systems I want to implement are Beautify and Francon Games oil paint system. So what I'm going to do is make two classes that are going to control those because they're a little bit more complex than just assigning a profile to a volume. Move these into their own files and we'll work on them one at a time. I think what we'll do is actually start with the Francon system first. So I'll create a reference for that so we can store it here. And 
we'll just have another initialize method in the start and it'll set up our system for us. Basically very similar to what we're doing already. We'll just create a new game object. We'll add our new component to it. And that's really it for this. Then let's jump over to the new class here and start writing it out. So this is the first time I've actually used the oil paint one. So what I did was went and had a look at their demo and I copied a little bit of code from there and I'm just going to change it a little bit. So I'll import the dependencies here. Let's add a variable so that we can keep a reference to the settings. On awake, we can use the method of the class already to get those settings. Then let's just run another method called initialize. Initialize will handle the settings of everything we want for this. I'm just going to paste it right in here. Now you see I've set the intensity to be zero because I wanted to start it with no effect at all. And I'm going to set when to insert to be after rendering the skybox. Let's take a quick look inside of this settings class. You can see there's quite a lot going on here. So, so you can see there's a lot going on here. This tool is actually quite powerful. I'm starting to really like it just after playing with it for one day. So let's uh, clean this up. We need one method here that's going to change the intensity for us. So we can just accept a toggle like a Boolean on and off. Let's call it is active. If it's active, let's set intensity to one, otherwise zero. That's all we need to turn this effect on and off. Let's come back to the facade. I'm going to move all the initialization stuff, keep it at the bottom. And so in each of our public API methods, what we'll do is we will decide whether or not we want the painting effect to be on or off. So the only one I actually want it on is in the artistic one. So with that done, we can actually go back and see if it works. I'll just hit play here and let's might as well just start at the top again, make sure everything's working correctly. So horror, yeah, that's what we want. How about artistic? Yeah, and there we go. So now we have a cool hand painted effect whenever we want to do kind of an artistic render of something. And I've got it turned up to pretty much the max for this particular setting, but uh, it's definitely worth playing around with. I'd check that out if you're interested in that kind of effect. So next, let's add beautify into our mix so that our facade can control the different beautify settings. If this video is helpful or useful to you, give it a thumbs up. It helps YouTube share it with more people and it gives me feedback that it's useful for you. I'm just going to add a few more using statements because we're going to need them in a moment. And for beautify, what we can do is store the beautify settings similar to what we just did with the Francon ones. I'm also going to add a little bit more functionality here to make it a little bit more useful in the future. So I might want to access the settings of beautify from a public property. And we can also use a null coalescing assignment operator just to make sure that there is something actually in there. When we go to initialize this component, I will have already loaded our beautify volume onto this game object. So what we can do in awake is we can actually grab a reference to that volume. Let's iterate over all of the components, find the one that is the beautify component and return that one. That way we're not using the static one from the beautify settings. We're using the one that's actually on this game object. And if for some reason we don't find it there, let's just log an error message so that we know that. But that should be a little bit more robust and it'll get us the one that's local to this particular instance. So that's all the setup I want to do in this class, but now let's start adding some utility. What if we just wanted to turn off beautify altogether? We could just have a disable method here that would turn off the, let's see, it's called active. Yeah, there we go. Active equals false. And we can start toggling settings or actually just turning them explicitly on and off. I'll just make some room here. I'm not going to make methods for every single beautify setting because there's probably hundreds of them. But basically, we can just start with blur. We can toggle it on and off. We could toggle on and off sharpen. How about vignette? We could, uh, there's two vignette settings actually. There's the outer ring and the inner ring. So we can just toggle them. I'll come down here. Let's make some activate ones that'll actually accept a Boolean. We might as well do vignette first. So this is just basically the same, except we'll assign the Boolean value. Looks like I got a typo there. Let's fix that. Okay. How about we do the cinematic bands? Now that one, I've already configured it on the volume. So all I really need to do is turn it on and off. Uh, on the volume, that setting is called frame. And all we have to do is turn it on. So that's probably enough for our little demo. I think I'll just do a little bit of cleanup here. Once that's done, we can jump back over to the facade. Now we need to have another initialize method for beautify that's going to do something very similar to all the other ones. Basically, we'll create a game object for it. We're going to add a volume component to it and we'll load in the specific beautify volume that's already created. And then we need to add our new class to it so that we can control it. 
I'll just move this down below with the other initialize methods, and then we can start putting it to use. So let's keep it super simple for now. In the horror settings, I don't want any bands, but I do want the vignette. So let's turn the bands off and vignette on. Now I'll just copy and paste this down to cinematic, but I actually want the opposite. I want the bands on and the vignette off. And then finally, down in the artistic one, I actually want to turn both of those things off. So I'll just paste it in there again and switch cinematic bands to off. Yeah, and then we should be good. I think just before we go back to Unity, I'm going to quickly, quickly add one more thing for outline because I want to use it in the horror setting. So I'll have a toggle end and activate and I'll turn it on in horror, but off in the other two. There we go. All right, let's jump back to Unity. So if I hit play now, we'll see all three systems will load up in the hierarchy and we've got a pretty nice looking screen right now. If I start flipping through the buttons here, horror is going to work the way we think, but cinematic now should show us our bands. So that looks pretty awesome. It's got all the beautify effects happening uh, and the regular post-processing. That looks awesome. If we come over to artistic, of course, it's going to give us our oil painted look again, and we can just toggle between these as we like, and we could hook them up any way we want in code now. And that's the real power of the facade pattern. We don't have to worry about all the complexities of managing these three different systems. We just have one method to call for each of these styles that we want to present to the player. So just to make this a little bit more robust, I'm going to add require component of type volume to our beautify system. And I'm going to add one more extension method here, and I'm going to put this in the repository for the extensions. For some objects like this, we just want to hide them from the hierarchy because they're hidden behind the facade. We don't care about them so much. We're not really going to interact with them. Of course, there's sometimes you're going to want to interact with them. But for the most part, this is kind of set and forget. You go through the facade and you don't worry about the rest of it. So let's just hide each of these in the hierarchy as we're initializing them. So with that done, let's just have a quick look at what we've come up with here. We've got basically a facade with three public methods. Set up horror, set up cinematic, and set up artistic. The rest of your game really only needs to know about these three methods. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. I'm just going to say one last thing, and that is do not be tempted to use the facade simply to hide your messy code from the rest of your game. That's not what it's for. <laughs> as tempting as that might be. The facade is really just to provide an easy to use friendly interface over top of complex subsystems. That's all I've got for you today. I'll see you in the next one.